Welcome to Electron Online. Well, it turns out that capacitors can act like voltage and current dividers. The question then is, how does the current and how does the voltage divide across capacitors? Well, in the first circuit, we have a voltage source. We have two capacitors that are in series. And so the question is, how much voltage will be across the first capacitor and what will be the voltage across the second capacitor? Remembering the definition of capacitance, we can say that the capacitance is equal to the ratio of the charge that collects on the capacitor divided by the voltage across that capacitor. In other words, if we solve this for Q, we can say that the charge on the capacitor is equal to the product of C times V. Now we also know that we have capacitors in series that the charge on each of them must be the same, which means Q across 1 must equal Q across 2, Q across 1 must equal Q across 2, which means that C1V1 must equal C2V2. The product of the capacitance and voltage must be the same, which means if one capacitor is larger than the other, that means the voltage across that capacitor must be smaller. The larger the capacitor, the smaller the voltage, which means the voltage across each capacitor is inversely proportional to the size of the capacitance which means then that the voltage across the first capacitor is going to be equal to the ratio of the capacitance of the other capacitor because if you want if this is a smaller capacitor then it will have a larger voltage meaning this capacitor is larger so the voltage across this capacitor will be proportional to the size of the capacitance of the other capacitor so it will be c2 divided by the sum c1 plus c2 times the voltage from the source. And the voltage across the second capacitor, V2, is therefore equal to the capacitance of the other capacitor, C1, divided by C1 plus C2 times the voltage of the source. And that's how the voltage will be divided. If C2 is a larger capacitor, which means C1 is a smaller capacitor, small capacitor means larger voltage, so it will be proportional to the size of the capacitance of the other capacitor. Now let's go look at the other circuit where we're trying to determine how much current will flow through each of the two branches. Notice that here we have parallel branches. Here we have the total current, I of the source, and how it will be divided between them. Here we have the equation that the current in a branch is equal to the capacitance times the rate of change of the voltage over time. With other words, the current is proportional to the capacitance. Larger capacitor means larger current, smaller capacitor means smaller current. Therefore, in this case, we can say that I1, the current in the first branch, is equal to, to the, the capacitance of the first capacitor divided by C1 plus C2, the sum of the two, times I of the source. So in this case, the current will be proportional to the capacitance instead of proportional to the capacitance of the other capacitor. And then we can say that I sub 2 is therefore equal to C2 divided by C1 plus C2 multiplied times I sub S. Notice when you add these two together, you'll get C1 plus C2 divided by C1 plus C2 times I sub S, which means the total current then still be I sub S, which means the equation is correct. So here is the way in which we can calculate the voltage, and here is the way in which we can calculate the current, that's how it's done.